Hello and welcome to another rapid revision session. My name is Mr Sandbrook and today we're going to look at the Great Plague. In this video we'll look at explanations, treatments and preventions for the plague. So let's start with some key points of the Great Plague. We're looking at summer 1665 and the outbreak was approximately 25 years since the last time the plague had hit London. Approximately 75,000 people died. And this was the last ever major outbreak of the plague in London. And other parts of Britain were also affected by the plague in this summer. So let's look at explanations of the plague. Our key point is that these explanations had not changed much since the Middle Ages. Firstly, rational explanations. Now these were mostly based on miasma theory, the idea that bad air caused disease. So people looked to the movement of the planets, as well as the filth around them, to explain why the air was bad. They believed that this led to miasma, which in turn led to an imbalance of the humours, which would make people sick. People also believed that person-to-person -person contact was a key cause of the plague. But like in the Middle Ages, people also turned to the supernatural. They believed everything was the result of God's will. So the reason for continuity here is that although the Renaissance had seen anatomical developments, people still did not know what really caused disease. So their explanations hadn't changed. So let's look at treatments. And again, we have continuity here. Our key point is that treatments had not changed much since the Middle Ages. Rational treatments were similar. So bleeding and purging, draining pus from buboes, applying medicines or potions from apothecaries, applying live birds to buboes to suck out the infection. But again, some supernatural treatments. And again, these should be familiar. So prayer to God, both public and private. Public fasting days, organized by the authorities. And also the wearing of lucky charms, often with the words abracadabra on them. The reason for this continuity is that there was still no effective cure for the plague. And the treatments that we've looked at reflected the continuity in explanations. So let's look at how people try to prevent the plague. On the whole, we have continuity, but preventions were slightly better organized than in the Middle Ages but they did have only limited impact in preventing the plague. The Lord Mayor of London published plague orders to try to organise a response. So this included shutting up entire families and appointing watchmen and searchers to check on the conditions and the behaviour of the people who had been locked up. The banning and culling of, of pigs, dogs and cats to try to limit the filth closing theatres and taverns and alehouses to ban large assemblies of people, orders for householders to sweep and wash down the areas in front of their homes, and organising for the collection and removal of bodies. The authorities also arranged for barrels of tar to be burned to try to stave away the miasma. And it was local officials in parishes that were ordered to carry out these actions. Now the reasons for the limited impact of these is that some people ignored the rules and hid their symptoms. Resources were limited, it was hard to find watchmen and searchers. And the government did not give the Lord Mayor of London their full backing. Many did not want to be shut in and many of the government left. So here are three ways that you could take your learning of the Great Plague further. 
Remember, there are lots of other rapid revision videos on the CHSG History YouTube channel.